How did this YouTuber go from a 12-year-old kid in the last hour, I've gained almost 100 subscribers to spending $100,000 on a Minecraft server? Well, his name is Speed Silver. He created his first channel in 2014, and then it got hacked and deleted two years later. So he made a new one. His old channel had PvP videos on random servers, but this one focused on one server in particular, Hypixel. And he only wanted one thing. YouTube rank. To get YouTube rank on Hypixel, you need 30,000 subscribers. And one of the only people who'd gotten it by just making Hypixel videos was Technoblade. In one of his videos, Technoblade mentioned buying YouTube ads to help him grow. Speed Silver was a huge fan, so he tried it too. To put it bluntly though, he was a squeaker and had no idea how YouTube ads worked. Subscribe to my office. I'm 50. The ads burned through his allowance fast, and by the time he ran out, he only had around 2,000 subscribers. If he really wanted to succeed, he'd have to try to grow naturally. He began sinking all his time and energy into improving his videos. He learned Cinema 4D before his voice dropped, then started a ranked Skywars series where he quickly improved at PvP. He met a friend named Semet who made him an animated intro. Mind you, considering they were both still like 13, this was crazy. The next thing Speed Silver wanted to tackle was on a Minecraft server. Now let me preface this by saying he was a kid, but he stole a bunch of Hypixel maps, added public plugins, and hosted the entire thing on his dad's borrowed laptop. Why is my internet bill tripled? Anytime it got to like 30 players, it just crashed. Despite it being a complete mess, Speed Silver clearly had a passion. Plus, somehow he still made a profit. But he wasn't going to get YouTube ranked by failing to make Minecraft servers, so he went back to Hypixel. He wanted to make a new style video he'd seen more recently called UHC Highlights, a compilation of the best moments from games of UHC, which if you don't know is like Minecraft Battle Royale. The problem is, it's hard to make a compilation of your best moments when you can't even win a game. Jesus Christ, he just dropped us, man. But he kept practicing and eventually Eventually, he got his first win. Yes! Oh my god! Excited, he edited it, and it flopped. If he wanted to grow, he'd have to make content people actually wanted to watch. But his PvP skills would still be very useful. He started posting exclusively UHC commentary videos, and since his voice was finally starting to change, he saw some level of success. But that success felt hollow. There was another YouTuber making very similar content, and relatively speaking, he was absolutely blowing up. That YouTuber was Wisp. Speed Silver wanted to figure out what Wisp was doing that he wasn't, so he clicked on a Wisp video. Welcome back to UHC. Needless to say, Speed Silver was not a fan initially, but that was about to change. On the way home from school one day, he ran into a mysterious person who recognized him. Are you Speed Silver? What the? It's me, Wiss. Apparently, they only lived like five minutes apart. Afterwards, they talked about YouTube for a while. Speed Silver was super inspired. Wisp was doing YouTube full time and had such a total passion for growing his channel. After this interaction, they became good friends, and Wisp started giving Speed Silver a ton of YouTube advice. His thumbnails improved, and his videos finally started to reach more people. He was invited to bigger events where he met top players of the time, like Pika Clicks, the same guy who went on to make Minecraft Ultimate, the subject of my favorite Technoblade video. Speaking of Technoblade. Blade, he was in Speed Silver's chat during one of these events. That must have been amazing for him. After grinding videos for a couple more months, Speed Silver made one about a glitch, and it finally pushed him over the requirements for YouTube rank. Then he started a series documenting his journey to becoming the number one UHC player in the world. The only goal left was for him to reach a million, and it felt like nothing could stand in his way. Before I continue the video, I want to hit 100,000 subscribers, and I need your help. I really want to make this my career, so it genuinely means so much if you considered subscribing. Things were still going great, but Speed Silver started to notice a problem. Every day, more and more hackers dominated UHC. Frustrated, he talked to Wisp about it. I can't record anything, bro. Literally same. What if we make our own server with a competent anti-cheat? So, Speed Silver and Wisp started working on a server. It was to be called UHC Arcade. Ownership was split three ways between Wisp, Speed Silver, and a developer. Wisp channel was bigger, so he got a bigger share. Since Speed Silver was the number one player, he felt it was justified to take a lot of the direction himself. However, Wisp was starting to get worried. He felt like he was spending a bunch of his own money on someone else's this project. As the server got closer and closer to release, Wisp decided to back out. And since Speed Silver was a much smaller YouTuber, the developer backed out too. UHC Arcade was a complete failure. Don't get me wrong, Speed Silver learned a lot, but that didn't make the situation any easier. Without UHC Arcade, hackers made it increasingly difficult to make any UHC videos on Hypixel. At this point, he basically only played UHC to record, instead spending his free time on a new Hypixel minigame. It never occurred to him to try making videos on it, until he realized some of his biggest inspirations were doing it. The gears in his brain started turning, so around 10 months after Skyblock's release, he finally posted his first video on it. The video immediately became his most 
popular, so he made more. He really enjoyed the room Skyblock gave for a more complex story, and he was having fun. Side note, this is actually when I started watching him. He hired his old friend Semit to help him edit, and he quickly rose to the top of the Skyblock community. As far as I can tell, he had the highest view average of any Skyblock YouTuber at the time. He kept pushing throughout the pandemic, and eventually reached over 150,000 subscribers. That also means he passed me, but Speedsilver was about to receive a message that would make him reconsider everything. Yo, can we keep making UHC Arcade? This was a massive decision. Speedsilver was already firmly a Skyblock YouTuber and it didn't make sense to switch back. But on the other hand, this is what he'd wanted from the start. He knew he'd feel left out if he wasn't a part of it. So eventually, he made up his mind. You can go ahead without me. A few months went by and they kept to their respective content. But one day, when Speedsilver checked in on Wisp's channel, he was shocked. Wisp was getting millions of views. And these weren't UHC videos anymore, they were part of a new trend. Minecraft Manhunt. Speedsilver tried making one, but it completely flopped. On top of that, he was getting fed up with the cycle. Hypixel adds a new item, he puts his all into a video about it, and then someone else rushes to make a video with his exact thumbnail style first. Every time, his videos did so much worse as a result. So he called up some friends, including Wisp, and desperately asked what to do. No, I tried to make a Minecraft Manhunt and they hated it! <sighs> What about a new channel? It was a big decision, but it was becoming clear that he'd never reach a million like this. So, he decided to take the leap. He created a new channel with much more memorable branding and funneled all his skills he'd picked up on his previous channel. He wanted to do things right. When he finally posted the first video on the new channel, he was nervous. He shouted it out on his old channel and he picked a very popular trend to jump on. He even had Wisp share it to his audience. And to his disbelief, it did okay. Not nearly well enough to justify leaving his old channel yet. So, he tried again. And again. This third video did okay, but it wasn't until his sixth video where he really started to pop off. He continued uploading consistent challenges and manhunts and had a very unique style. Several of his editing choices have become iconic, and his videos were getting millions of views. He saw the rise of the 100 days trend and decided to try his hand at making a video like that. He used an idea inspired by Wisp, and finally, with that video's release, he reached his goal of a million subscribers. He'd finally done it, but there was a problem. While a million was a big number, what did it actually mean? His viewers could not have been older than 10. Speedsilver wanted to do something actually memorable. Hello and welcome to a very exciting announcement. MCC, a tournament with hundreds of thousands of live viewers, was giving smaller creators a chance to earn a spot. Speedsilver wasn't exactly small, but he was smaller than most of the participants. In order to join, you had to apply with three other YouTubers. As he was debating whether or not to make an application, his friend Nestorio invited him to their team. Speedsilver decided it was worth it. He'd been wanting a chance to take advantage of his PvP background. At this point, there was only a day left until applications closed. As fast as they could, they threw together an application and hoped for the best. Only 10 teams could be accepted. I'm Silva, and I'm a 19-year-old Minecraft Twist YouTuber. God, I hate how he talks. But exactly nine days later, out of over 3,000 applications, they made it to the top 10. They weren't out of the woods yet, though. For this to be something memorable, he'd have to win. Nice. Nice! Shot him. I got bottom four. Okay, I'm going I'm right side. Plus, please. You got first place. You guys got this. Let's go! Here it is. Whichever team wins this wins the entire event. Currently, the opposing team has 3,000 more points, meaning they did significantly better in the rest of the event. Speed Silver's team is at a huge disadvantage. Go. Let's go! Let's go! Against all odds, they did it! Speedsilver had done something memorable. And now that that was over, it was time to focus all his energy on YouTube. He released two more 100 days videos, but while working on his fourth, he was starting to burn out. He ended up posting it with basically no narration since he just couldn't bring himself to do it. Once again, he needed to try something new. Civilization events were a new trend around this time, and they caught his interest. 100 players would be split into teams, and after a grace period, PvP would be turned on. Speedsilver had tons of ideas to make these even cooler. But before he had the chance to start, Technoblade died. He was the reason Speedsilver was where he was at with YouTube and everything. Speedsilver grew up watching his videos, and they inspired so many of the decisions throughout his YouTube journey. Techno's death really showed that any day can be our last. It may feel like it'll never happen to you, but time and time again, it does happen. Those people just aren't alive to talk about it. Speedsilver had an opportunity Technoblade didn't. He got to keep pursuing his dream, and he couldn't let that go to waste. 
Speed Silver decided to go ahead with civilization videos. He spent ages on his own event server and decided to add proximity chat. Ever since his first time seeing it, he's been fascinated. After putting together his massive event, he tried recording it, but something about it was just boring. So he decided to try one more time. He brought some entertaining old friends from the UHC community, and this time, it went perfectly. After posting, it became his most popular video. The pain of the recording and the stress of the video coming out were finally worth it. But his editor, Semit, was exhausted. The video had hundreds of hours of footage split across dozens of perspectives. And as an editor myself, I am so sorry he had to go through that. Speed Silver needed a team. He tried hiring editors, but none of them were up for a project of this caliber either. Because of this, he wouldn't be able to maintain this style of content forever. His events were a big deal though. A lot of my friends wanted to participate. He realized how much demand there was and decided to keep it going for a little while longer. He also started to think of ways he could capitalize on it with a public server. But it wouldn't be just any public server, he wanted to do it right. Every video from this point on was designed to drum up demand for it. By his fourth civilization video though, Semit couldn't bring himself to edit anymore. Speed Silver was forced to edit entirely by himself, and it was taxing. On top of that, other YouTubers began to notice him succeeding. They cloned his videos exactly. The game design, editing style, and even his skin. It was too much, and he decided to switch content again. But if Speed Silver was going to switch, it had to be something he'd enjoy and something that would also fit with his server. Also, with Civilization events, he was just narrating what other people did. He wanted a chance to play the game himself and to sharpen up his old PvP skills. With all that considered, this was a really tall order. But eventually, he came up with a new format. Battle Royale. 100 players are placed in a map with structures and loot, and they have to compete to be the last man standing. Except it's Minecraft. It mirrored his old UHC videos, but implemented all the new strategies he'd learned about YouTube since. He recorded the first episode, and since the whole video would be from his perspective, it was a lot easier to edit. Excited, he also recorded a second episode. Then, right before leaving to visit his family for Christmas, he uploaded episode 1. During his trip, he randomly checked his channel and was super disappointed to see it had flopped. Since the second episode was already recorded, he was desperate to get this format to work. In one last attempt, he connected to his family's terrible Wi-Fi and made a new thumbnail. And somehow, it started gaining views. Then he posted the second one, and that one got millions of views too. The third video did the best out of all of them. He even got a ton of comments asking how to participate, which was a really good sign for the public server he was working on. But while he was recording his fourth, he ran into an issue. His viewers had gotten too good. It was super hard to stay alive long enough to make the video. Even though he did manage to survive, constant PvP made the video feel repetitive and boring. But he'd been secretly waiting to announce his public server for a year, and he had to make one last Battle Royale video to promote it. And when it finally came out, he did not disappoint. The Play Battle Royale is a game mode where the goal is to be the last team standing on a giant map with custom world generation and new exciting structures to explore. And you'll begin the game by riding a dragon across the map and can glide down to begin preparing for PvP to enable after 15 minutes. Hoplite. Cool name. The server was an instant success. And quite frankly, it better be, because he actually spent $100,000 on it. As a YouTuber, Speed Silver added all the custom content specifically to make creating videos as easy as possible. It seems like Hoplite is a genuinely good content opportunity right now for new YouTubers, which, to me at least, is a really good sign. It also helps that he isn't pulling a tub net and he's actually promoting it. And that's kind of where things are at today. Stick around and I'll reveal his next set of exactly four videos. But first, if you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed. Only a small percentage of you actually are. I'd like to mention that if anything here felt weirdly detailed, that's because I got most of my information directly from Speed Silver. Okay, back to my sexy voice explaining what he's got next. Well, I was gonna say it's not more Battle Royale videos, but he just tweeted that it will be, so... Me, I guess. Although he did tell me when it'll come out. And with that, have a great rest of your day.